Today we're going to discuss exciting discoveries from one of the galaxies extremely close to us. The galaxy you see behind me, Large Magellanic Cloud. And this time it's a really exciting discovery of what seems to be one of the most ancient stars ever seen. Very likely one of the first stars formed in this galaxy with the age of over 13 billion years old. Now the exact age is currently unknown, but this is still a really exciting discovery because it also revealed elemental composition of various stars in this galaxy, which turn out to be different from what we have in the Milky Way. Specifically, revealing that stars in the Milky Way galaxy most likely became enriched in elements very differently from large Magellanic Cloud. And this actually has a really important implication for the existence of potential alien life out there. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss these new discoveries from the Large Magellanic Cloud, discuss this galaxy a little bit more in general, and of course talk about this new star. But first, let's talk about these ancient stars and how the scientists usually try to find them. So, according to modern theories, everything most likely started with the mysterious population 3 stars, also known as the first stars in the universe. And these were basically these humongous stars, possibly up to several thousand solar masses in mass, but made only out of hydrogen and helium. And these stars are believed to be very different from any of the stars we have around us, and possibly only existed for thousands or maybe millions of years. And then they essentially all exploded, producing powerful supernova, which then led to new stars, more supernova, and the eventual enrichment of the galaxy with various elements. And so all of the elements we have today, including the elements in our Sun and on the planet Earth, were all a result of all of these multiple supernova happening over billions of years. For example, for the Sun and planet Earth, it's been established that over 40 different supernova must have happened in order to create all of the elements we observe on our planet. But as you go back in time, and as you find earlier and earlier stars, you're going to be finding stars with much more primitive composition, mostly containing hydrogen, helium, and maybe some lithium, but not much else. And these stars are referred to as low metallicity stars, basically containing only hydrogen and helium. And so the lower the metallicity, the more likely the older the star. And so for the past few decades, researchers have been basically trying to find stars with as low metallicity as possible. I mean, nothing so far has been found that has no metallicity. All of the stars always have at least something, for example, carbon, oxygen, and a lot of other heavier elements, at least to some extent. But some stars have been found that contain extremely low amounts of all of these elements, implying that they're really ancient. You can actually learn about some of these stars, including the mysterious Methuselah star, in some of the videos in the description. But all of these other stars, such as the Methuselah, are basically second generation stars. Stars that formed after the existence of population 3 stars from all of the gas following the first supernova. And though you'd think there would be a lot of these stars pretty much everywhere, turns out that they're actually pretty rare. Less than 1 in 100,000 stars in the Milky Way seem to be second generation. Most other stars are much farther generations or much younger, so even these second generation stars are extremely hard to find. And finding one outside of the Milky Way galaxy is of course even more exciting. Because then we can actually compare it to what we found in the Milky Way just to see how galaxies evolved differently in the beginning. And well, it just so happens that this is exactly what was just discovered in the Large Magellanic Cloud. An extremely exciting new star found in the Large Magellanic Cloud that contains extremely low metallicity, much lower than any other star observed in this galaxy. So, for example, when it comes to low metallicity stars in our own galaxy or anywhere around us, one of the measurements scientists use for this is what's known as iron to hydrogen ratio. And inside our sun, for every iron atom, there are approximately 20,000 atoms of hydrogen. But in metal poor stars, such as population 2 stars, here the metallicity would be anywhere from one tenth of that to maybe one thousandth. In other words, for every single atom of iron, you're going to find 20 million atoms of hydrogen. This is generally what's observed in the Milky Way, and this is how we usually find these metal poor stars. But one of the stars here was extreme. Here, for every single atom of iron, it contained 240 million atoms of hydrogen. Or basically the metallicity was 12,000 times lower than the Sun. Making this unusual star potentially one of the lowest in metallicity ever found, and thus, definitely a second generation star, and possibly one of the oldest ever found. A star referred to as LMC 119, and a star that's basically the first ever second generation star 
discovered outside of the Milky Way. But here, a much more exciting discovery is not just the star or the fact that it exists there, it was really the comparison of elemental composition to what we have in the Milky Way. Because apparently the elemental composition of the star was actually different from the second generation stars in our own galaxy. For some reason, not only does it have a lot less iron than expected, it seems to be extremely poor in carbon. And actually not just this one star, all of the poor metal stars discovered in the Large Magellanic Cloud seem to be carbon deficient, which presents us with a really intriguing conclusion. It was always believed that elements potentially evolve in a very similar way in most galaxies out there, but this discovery suggests otherwise. It actually suggests that at least for things like carbon, the overall enhancement and the production is actually different depending on the galaxy. And because this was discovered in the Large Magellanic Cloud, it's important for one other reason. Today we know that Large Magellanic Cloud back in the days was very likely what's known as a dwarf barred spiral galaxy, or basically a galaxy that's sort of like the Milky Way, it has spiral arms, it has a bar, but just much, much smaller in size. Here's one famous example, 17 million light years away from us, NGC 6503. But at some point, approximately 2 billion years ago, a large Magellanic cloud approached the Milky Way a little bit too close and started to fall apart, eventually becoming irregular in shape. You can actually still sort of see the bar in the middle, and it does still have some spiral arms, but it's now being stretched and falling apart. But prior to the interaction with the Milky Way, it's quite likely that Large Magellanic Cloud was actually a lot less developed chemically and elementally and was a lot more similar to ancient galaxies out there. It definitely lacked a lot of heavier elements compared to the Milky Way, but this implied the lack of most elements. Yet in this particular case, this discovery suggests that carbon is particularly deficient, suggesting that for some reason the place where this galaxy formed did not form carbon as much as the Milky Way. Something about the environment where this galaxy formed was extremely different from where the Milky Way formed as well. And for astronomy, this is a pretty big discovery. It basically implies that we cannot make assumptions about other galaxies based on the Milky Way. Moreover, for astrobiology, this is a really important discovery as well. It basically means that chances for complex organic molecules to exist in this galaxy are also extremely low. Although we know that some do exist, they actually have been found back in 2018, especially things like methanol, methyl formate, and the methyl ether. These are technically also basic building blocks of organic life, and in theory should be enough to start forming some type of organic life, but even here the amounts found were minuscule in comparison to the Milky Way. And so the overall low content of carbon in this entire galaxy, especially in some of the earlier stars, kind of implies an extremely low chance for organic life to exist, or at least much lower chance than in our own galaxy. And so this process of carbon enhancement or addition of various carbon molecules to stars and of course planets around those stars, even though it was always believed to be universal, actually seems to be different depending on the galaxy. But we obviously have no idea how different and if there are galaxies out there that are potentially more carbon enriched or if Milky Way is just unique in this way as well. And so by itself this is a pretty exciting discovery but not the first exciting discovery about Large Magellanic Cloud or its interaction with the Milky Way in the last year. You can actually find out more details about discoveries from, for example, the Tarantula Nebula, the most active star-forming region around us, in some of the videos in the description, and discoveries from the famous supernova 1987A that happened here as well, or discoveries about the unusual bridge between Large Magellanic Cloud and its neighbor, Small Magellanic Cloud. The bridge we refer to as Magellanic Stream. Something super interesting was found there a few months ago, and the video about this is in the description as well. And so this unusual galaxy that's very likely going to collide and combine with the Milky Way in the next two and a half billion years is basically teaching us a little bit more about elemental evolution of the universe, but also giving us a little bit more hints about the likelihood of organic life to exist out there. Now we're not going to know much more about any of this until future discoveries or even more investigations, especially of other galaxies, but at least for now, the discovery of this ancient star with an extremely low metallicity is already pretty exciting. We'll talk more about this once there are some updates. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.